As I mentioned in this course, I plan to write code exactly as I would write it professionally and not to write some temporary, easy to learn code at the beginning. I will teach the code as I go. I will refine it to exactly how I would write it professionally so that you can start off by writing even the most simple of applications, but in the most professional way that somebody in my position would write. As this code is currently starting to deviate more and more from how I would write it, due to the lack of knowledge you have so far, it's time to take some time to learn some tips and tricks on how to reduce the code size, make it drier, and make it more professional. Let's make use of the new C-sharp features and get this code more like how I would write it professionally. Let's start by compacting our code a little. As we have covered in the last lesson, we can place an expression directly inside an if parentheses. As we have only used this succeeded variable inside the if parentheses, we might as well remove the variable and place the expression directly inside the if statement. This is exactly the same code without the superfluous variable being declared. If this expression was quite long, and it spanned over multiple lines, we may still want to create a variable for the sake of keeping the if statement looking shorter and easier to read. So just because we are not using the variable does not necessarily always mean we should remove it and place it in line. It is a preference of the developer and the purpose is to make your code as easy and clean to read as possible. Another neat feature of C-sharp 8 is that when a method requires a parameter with an out keyword, because this method is going to directly edit the value, we can actually declare the variable directly in line inside the parameter declaration. Simply place the keyword var between out and the variable name, and now we can remove this declaration and we can see we still have the past date variable in our local scope because we can access it here. This is exactly the same code as doing this, or rather, to be more accurate, it's equivalent to doing this. We are declaring the variable without a value and we are passing it in. If we declared it this way, we can also see the IntelliSense telling us that we can have a variable declaration in line. Press control dot while the cursor is over this and you can see it recommends the same thing we just wrote. So this is exactly the same as declaring it in one line and passing it in at the next, but again makes it much cleaner. This is a brand new feature of C-sharp 8, so it's not available in .NET Framework applications because they can only target C-sharp 7.3. If we go to the application properties, you can see we're on .NET Core, so we have the C-sharp 8 capabilities. That's helped to reduce our code quite a bit. We've removed two variable declarations so far. Another tip is when we have an if or else statement and there's only a single line inside the code block or a single line with a comment, then my preference is to remove the curly brace code blocks. This is because C Sharp allows you to have a single statement if an else statement without the curly braces. If we remove the curly braces, you can see the code is exactly the same and the single statement is inside of the if statement. This is my preference when there is one line of code and at most one line of comments inside the code block. Otherwise it isn't clear that the code below is actually part of the if statement. It can become quite difficult to realize that something down here is actually only contained in this statement. Instead then, I would replace with the code block and it becomes visually more obvious. 
However, when there is a single line and at most a single comment, to me, it is easier to see and keeps your code more compact. We cannot remove the code block from the else statement. Let's see what happens if we did. Although this code looks fine, and it is, it would compile. What's going to happen when we run this code is that the console.write line would run if the else statement was hit. But the return line below is outside of this if statement. So this would run after the if else statement if this did not return. It's equivalent to writing this. So the flow of this code now becomes if this, do this, else, do this, and presumably if nothing has returned from the method inside of these statements, this line of code will then run. So by removing the curly braces, we have actually changed our code, which is not the intention. And that's because when there are no curly braces after an if or an else statement, the compiler automatically chooses the next statement only and wraps it in the code block automatically for us at compile time. Some people always declare code braces around if and else statements to save from this accidental oversight of thinking code is inside a statement when it is not. I don't have this issue firstly because you should always pay attention. You should not become a lazy developer. If you do, or if your excuse is, well developers are lazy and we should help them as much as possible to prevent errors, then you are going to have far more issues to worry about than an accidental if else statement problem. Secondly, if we delete and reclose the end curly brace of the method, you can see Visual Studio automatically formats our code and clearly indicates by the indentation level that this statement is not inside this if else statement. That brings me on to one other useful feature, not built into Visual Studio, but if you come from Visual Studio Code or have used Visual Studio Code, you may really miss this feature. You will notice as you type in Visual Studio, it automatically adds end parentheses, end curly brackets, and automatically indents as you type. This is done because inside of Tools, Options, Text Editor, the language we use, Code Style, and then Formatting, we have these options. To automatically format when typing, to format when we have a semicolon at the end of a statement, automatically format when we close the end curly brace block as we just showed, format on return which tabs inside of ifs and code blocks and format when we paste code. However one thing is missing and that's if we have code like this else statement it isn't automatically formatted we can continue to write code and this stays in the wrong indentation level. In Visual Studio Code, you can enable something called Format on Save. This is very useful. To get this in Visual Studio, go to Extensions, Manage Extensions, and in Online, click in the search bar and type Format on Save. The top result here is the one I install. You would click the download button that isn't showing on mine because it's already installed. Once it's downloaded, fully close all instances of Visual Studio and you should receive a pop-up asking you to modify the installation. This will install the add-in and once done, reopen Visual Studio. Now it's reopened and installed like in my instance here. If we simply save this file now with Control S, watch what happens to this return statement. You can see it automatically has been tapped to the right place. This is really useful to keep your code clean and to make sure you don't have errors like this. 
For example, now, if we were to mess up all the indentation level of our code, and we didn't have this add-in installed, this is how the file would get saved. Also, we may accidentally get confused with the indentation level if indentation gets rather deep, and we overlook the fact that we have invalid tabs. However, with this add-in installed, press Ctrl S, and the entire document is reformatted to the correct indentation level. This is really useful. It's very rare I install extensions in Visual Studio, as I don't like to clutter the IDE and introduce potential bugs. However, this extension is very useful.